welcome to another episode on India Health Mission, a campaign that aims to have critical conversations around health and healthcare in India and how we make it more accessible and affordable. As we all celebrate Portion Ma this month, it is perhaps appropriate to start these conversations by talking about nutrition, which is the starting point for our health and development. Today, we talk about how important it is to be well nourished and how nutrition protects us and helps us manage and prevent diseases. Good nutrition is the foundation for a strong immune system, proper growth and overall well-being. A well-balanced diet rich in essential nutrients like vitamins, minerals, proteins and healthy fats is crucial for preventing malnutrition, enhancing immunity and reducing the risk of chronic diseases such as diabetes, heart condition and obesity. So for this very important conversation joining us today, we have with us, let me introduce we have Dr. Sarath Gopalan, President, Nutrition Society of India, consultant, pediatric gastroenterologist, Madhukar Rainbow Children's Hospital, New Delhi. Also joining us, Dr. Nikhil Tandon, Professor and Head of Department Endocrinology and Metabolism, AIMS. Dr. Samir Gupta, Senior Interventional Cardiologist, Director, Metro Group of Hospitals. And Dr. Manjul Joshipura, Senior Vice President, Innovations and New Product, Kerala Pharmaceuticals. Thank you all so much for joining, I think, in this very crucial and critical conversation. To begin with, uh, Dr. Gopalan, I would like to ask you the first question here. The state of malnutrition in our country is one of the most significant threats to human health, something, I mean, we've been grappling with since independence. Where are India's nutritional challenges when it comes to pregnancy and infancy? And what is India's malnutrition crisis at this point? Thank you, Amrika. Uh, so, being a pediatrician and a pediatric gastroenterologist, let me start right at the beginning, where the life begins. If you start from infancy, the first and foremost thing is ensuring exclusive breastfeeding up to six months of age. These are the national guidelines, and despite uh, persistent efforts, Things could definitely improve when it comes to exclusive breastfeeding, but a lot has been achieved over the years. Having said this, that being the first objective, while the emphasis is on exclusive breastfeeding, it is equally important to ensure that at six months of age, the young infant is exposed to other foods, which are referred to as complementary foods, the weaning foods to start with, other food items other than breast milk. One of the main uh, uh, highlights of the dietary guidelines for complementary feeding, which have been very recently rolled out, are the emphasis on cutting down on high fat, salt, and sugar containing foods. And in this regard, use of home based foods with uh, uh, with an, uh, which are adapted to decrease the amount of salt and sugar which are added, keeping in mind the guidelines, uh, would go a long way in ensuring uh, optimum health that yeah. when it comes to the complementary feeding practice. The third aspect in, when it comes to infants and young children is when should we in introduce animal milk in the diet? Now, from the standpoint of encouraging and promoting breastfeeding, the most practical suggestion which the pediatricians of uh, the young uh, infant and young child feeding chapters uh, put forward is that if you delay introduction of animal milk directly till one year of age, but animal milk containing complementary foods like ghee, uh, uh, cheese, and other food items uh, can be introduced even after six months. But the direct introduction of animal milk, it is better if it's done after one year of age. Sure. And breastfeeding should be continued beyond two years of age. Coming to the pregnant woman. Now, there is a program we have already had in place, the anemia program. But we have to look at uh, four different aspects here. One is the, the strategy itself, which has been in, implemented for several years the implementation, whether there are any gaps, supervision of that implementation, and recently there has been a lot of interest generated in can there be any ways by which we can improve absorption of nutrients from the gut, any scientific advances in this direction. And there's the concept of a life cycle approach from womb to tomb. 
starting right from when the child is infant is born right through to the elderly stage. I think, uh, Dr. Gopalan, thank you for explaining that so we understand, you know, from breastfeeding and what you've explained about the womb to tomb, you know, the first thousand days are extremely critical. Moving ahead, uh, Dr. Tandon, in fact, we do know, like, India also faces this dual burden where, you know, one hand, uh, malnutrition is a huge challenge and on the other, there's a heavy incidence of overnutrition and obesity. But often people suffering from obesity also have nutritional deficiencies. Could you explain that to us? How can proper nutrition effectively address this as well? So actually malnutrition really covers the entire spectrum of both over and under nutrition. Now, when you're obese, you may actually end up with additional problems where, you know, uh, certain vitamins which can get stored in the fat may get primarily located out there and therefore not enough available in the circulating fluid. Obviously, the presence of a range of uh, fats which are not desirable. You need fats. Yeah. I think that this is that we should disabuse people of the notion that you don't need fats. Yes. But you need fats of a certain amount of a certain type. Once you either take the wrong sorts of fat or an excessive amount of fat, it contributes significantly to you know formation of plaque in the coronary arteries, formation and, and affecting by deposition of fat in different body organs, also impeding your ability to metabolize and therefore contribute to you know, elevation in sugars, elevated yeah. circulating blood lipids, and all of these then eventually contribute to a negative overall cardiometabolic risk. No, I think, thank you. I think what you said about habits and being mindful is extremely critical here. And right fats, I think that's another very important thing because sometimes we go under extremes. Dr. Gupta, talking of uh, obesity and diabetes, you know, the rising burden of NCDs in our country has become a public health crisis. How many of the NCDs are linked to poor nourishment what dietary changes would you recommend to reduce the risk of cardiovascular conditions in the Indian population? So, Amika, I think, uh, first of all, let me congratulate you when you, you are talking about such an important thing, which is portion, right? Nutrition, it is the essence of what, of all of us, right? Food, the food that we eat. Um, so, you know, obesity is becoming a major, major problem. And I, as a cardiologist, see diseases and heart attacks and other problems related to obesity every single day. Uh, you know, India is becoming the heart disease capital of the world. It is getting the diabetes capital of the world and they're all linked to nutrition. Most of the lifestyle illnesses, diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, some malignancies, they're all linked to, to, to food and nutrition. Um, you know, the, the high salt intake that we have, you know, Indians do love our salts, whether it's in papad, whether it is in achar, whether yeah. it is in all the chutneys we eat, they are all very high salt containing things, they increase mm. the risk of hypertension. Mm. We love our sugars, you know, you go anywhere, you know, the festival season is coming up, everybody's going to be having mithai, they're going to be halwa, yeah. and they're going to be all these nice desserts, you know, it increases the risk of uh, diabetes yes. and it is not just these sugars Ambika, it is not just these sugars it is the hidden sugars so there is a direct correlation hmm. with the food we eat with the lifestyle diseases that we then inculcate and they in, in turn translate into heart attacks yes. and make us you know the heart disease capital of the world so I think a very important point, the food we eat is directly related to NCDs and that's why, you know, we see the number of cases increasing so much. And next time when somebody asks us, you know, meethe mein kya hai, we all need to be mindful and not just think of the sweet, but also the hidden fats which you've uh, spoken about. Uh, moving ahead, uh, Dr. Joshipura, we understand that nutrition is of critical importance to our overall health and performance. But how do we get that nourishment in an evolving uh, idea? Nutrition science is working to meet constantly changing global health needs. How do pharmace pharmaceutical companies like Cadilla respond to that changing need? I think if you look at the overall landscape, especially national landscape where you have titled this uh, session on India Health Mission. Mm -hmm. So you already touched upon the uh, two burdens that are overlapping. The other element of the nutrition is basically deficiency of vitamins, minerals and trace elements. But that is also getting uh, emerging as one of the important areas in overall nutritional landscape to address. As our country is progressing, you know, we, we are seeing you know, demands and, and, and requirements for such uh, nutritional supplements as well uh, by the medical experts and the patients as well. 
So I want to talk about uh, you know the, the the minerals that we are that are important in, in nutrition as such. And iron is a well known example. I think uh, everybody knows that uh, India suffered from uh, iron deficiency anemia for a long time, and even today, yes. in pregnant women, in, in, in children, and in adolescents also, anemia is a critical problem. Mm -hmm. So clearly, iron deficiency yeah. is is one of the things that can be tackled. The other elements, of course, is iodine, which is you know being tackled with fortification of several uh, foods. Salt is a classic example. Iodized salt is an example. And then uh, iron. Uh, we talked about calcium is an important uh, mineral that is being supplemented, uh, and there is a requirement for calcium supplement. And of course, uh, magnesium and zinc are important minerals. So these are the minerals. And then vitamin deficiency is also known. And uh, you know, as we know, vitamin A is required for vision, immune function, skin health, vitamin C for immune system, skin health, and so on. Vitamin D will know bone health and, and so on. Vitamin yes. E, K, and, and multiple, a multitude of vitamin vitamins, complexes, yes. right? Yeah, no, thank you so much. Moving on, Dr. Gupta, we're talking about nutrition science. Uh, you know, uh, Dr. Joshipara was talking about it, responding to the changing health needs. Now, our bodies are under more stress from the environment than ever before. How is nutrition helping our body scope? The heart and the immune system, for example, are very closely linked. And again, you know, the heart attacks are going up, cardiac arrest, we hear a lot more. How is this really linked to immunity and obviously nutrition? So uh, I think nutrition plays a pivotal role in almost 80 to 90 percent of the illnesses that we have. I would say non-communicable diseases. So you know, if you look at the Indian uh, plate, you know the, the food that we eat. Uh, majority of the food in India is very high in carbohydrates. We are a very carb-heavy country. Uh, we don't have much in terms of uh, the fiber and the green leafy vegetables. You know, uh, people think of potatoes as a vegetable. Mm. You know, but potato is more of starch. It's yes. more of carbohydrates. It's not giving you the green leafy, the fiber that mm. you need. And that's a very staple food, not only in India, but across the world, in fact. So, you know, the type of food you eat, the quality of the food you eat plays a very, very important and pivotal role. And there's also data to show that if you are having a good, nutritious meal, you, you may not need supplements. Yeah. Your micronutrient deficiency is going to be taken care of. A lot of your overall health is going to be taken care of. Mm. So the quality of the food is equally important uh, uh, as uh, for, uh, for just good general health. Yeah, so it's not just about eating. I think it's about what you're eating. I think that's the very important point. Uh, Dr. Tandan, while Dr. Gupta, this tell us a little bit about the food aspect. You know, I want to ask you specifically for our viewers, what is a healthy diet and what do you mean by a balanced diet? Just adding to what uh, Mr. Uh, Dr. Gupta said. So I, I look at diet you know, very simplistically as mm -hmm. sort of four components, right? Uh, quantity, mm -hmm. quality, timing or the individual portion size and the spacing, right? Mm. So obviously if you eat too much, it's not good for you. Same as if you eat too little, it's not good for you. So quantity is uh, what your caloric requirement is based on your height, based on your current weight, based on what your physical activity levels are. The second part is the quality. And I think Dr. Gupta highlighted that. In, in, we are um, traditionally a very carb-rich nation, which is unfortunate. I mean, there's many of the diets go up to 65 70 percent of you know of carbs yes. whereas you possibly need to get by with nearer 55 or something in that sort of range realizing that you still have 45 percent to make up with mm. and you have a judicious combination of protein and, and and fats for that it has to be there but it has to be a judicious balance the third thing is um, how do you space your meals out right and how do you sort of divide two large meals in a day perhaps is not a great idea because you're actually uh, dumping uh, a lot of calories into your system at one point in time and therefore dividing them allows uh, much less of what we call glycemic swings or sugars going up and down hmm. and then of course the spacing you can say well I eat five meals a day but I cluster them all together between you know 10 10 a.m. And, and 3 p.m. Hmm. again not a good idea because you're actually getting everything very close yeah. to each other so spacing them out reasonably so I think these are practical suggestions which would be of yes. utility for the common, uh, for a common person. Practical right. and absolutely, I think, very, very uh, doable. You know, sometimes very often we tell our children, oh, how many rotis did you eat? We're not focusing on how much dal or the vegetable they've had, but we're looking at, okay, you've had three rotis or four rotis, you're good. So I think it's not just practical, very informative. Thank you for that. Moving on, Dr. Gopalan, what is the nutrition gap? How does it affect and how do we deal with or how can we deal with it? 
You see, uh, the most important thing is we uh, we've had our leading bodies in the country which have come up with nutritive value of foods. Yeah. And now, most recently, an important step forward has been the practical dietary guidelines are now available and they are being rolled out. And these guidelines address various age groups mm -hmm. and they are also looking at showing practical pictorial depictions of recipes for different age groups. But what we need to consider as practicing clinicians also is how effectively we can roll out these guidelines to the community and what are the practical challenges we are likely to face depending on the age group we address. So we must distinguish that these guidelines are for the healthy population. When it comes to a particular individual where there's a major nutrition gap, be it a child or an adult, then our clinical judgment takes precedence and we need to tailor the nutritional approach for that particular individual. Sure. This is something we need to do. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Jiri. Well explained. Uh, thank you all for that. More on the nutrition gap and how we can address it when we come back. So do stay tuned with us on NDTV. Welcome back. You're watching India Health Mission and today we're talking about the critical role nutrition plays for our health. Talking about solutions now, let's move ahead. Uh, Dr. Gopalan, how do you assess the impact of Poshan Abhyan on improving nutritional outcomes in India? And what key areas should be focused on during Poshan Mass, especially since we are in it, to further strengthen its effectiveness? We have to adopt the practical approach. The, uh, as the dietary guidelines are now being formulated and are being rolled out, which I mentioned, uh, how do you practically convey the important nutritional scientific messages when it applies to the community. It is important that they understand quantities, types of food and portions rather than how much of a particular nutrient needs to be consumed. It is a, it is a team approach which is important for an effective uh, rollout of the, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the, the guidelines which have recently been formulated and the portion Abhyan this is one of the important components of the portion Abhyan where uh, we address the practical issues uh, which are uh, the important uh, points to consider when it comes to delivery of nutrition at the community level. Absolutely. So I think it's about working critical. It's important to work together. All stakeholders need to work together. Uh, Dr. Tandon talking about, since we are talking about Poshan Abhyan, what are, what are your suggestions? How can we make high quality nutrients affordable and accessible to all through India's uh, public health system? I don't think we should medicalize nutrition, right? I think that's the first thing. Saying make it through the public health system implies that we are medicalizing an issue, which is clearly a social issue. So I, I would look at it from a much broader perspective than to restrict it as a public health system. In fact, I would even stick my neck out so far as to go that um, giving only cereals at a low cost oh. may actually be counterproductive because again, the cereals are providing uh, primarily a carbohydrate rich source. Yeah. So I think the whole concept of what should be provided through at, at lower rates through a public distribution system hmm. uh, should not just be restricted to a cereal-based okay. uh, uh, diet. It should, be it should be looking at a wide range of food items which provide a broad nutrient delivery to the, to the, pop to the population at large. And that, that's the way I look at it. Okay, great point taken. Uh, Dr. Joshipura, what is the role, since we're talking about solutions that pharmaceutical manufacturers like Cadillac can play in making nutrients accessible to a wider population and in bridging the nutritional gaps in the Indian population? Right. So, as we heard, uh, no external supplement can be better than the balanced diet, balanced yeah. nutrition diet. Right? Mm -hmm. Having said that, uh, it remains a wishful thinking that everyone would take a balanced diet and everyone would benefit from the guidelines and, and, and so on and so forth. So, therefore, for example, uh, in a tropical country like India, which is full of 300 days of sunlight a year in most part of the country, why should anybody be vitamin D deficient? Right? But the fact of the matter is that vitamin D deficiency is very common and there's a new emerging science coming out of the vitamin D. For example, vitamin D earlier was known only for bone health. Yeah. Now there is a strong 
scientific evidence to suggest that, for example, cardiovascular health can be better, blood pressure regulation can be better, endothelial health can be better, mm -hmm. outcomes of patients with cardiovascular condition would be better if they have vitamin D restored to normal level. There is a uh, there is an evidence in diabetes management that diabetic patient will have a better beta cell function, they will have a better insulin uh, support if their vitamin D levels are restored. Similarly, mental health, respiratory health, pregnancy and lactation. So all there are new indications and new scientific evidences emerges where the role of elements and vitamin D supplements in this case okay. would require an external support. So therefore the industry would need to come out and be ready with this uh, newer uh, you know, to meet the newer requirements and, and newer uh, evidences and therefore making it accessible and affordable. Absolutely. I think that's why everybody needs to work together like we were talking. Dr. Gupta, the last question here is nutrition education. Now, how can doctors across specialties come together to create greater awareness around the role that nutrition plays in keeping India healthy like we've been discussing today? So, uh, I think this is a very important um, question as to how do we become a healthy nation? I know we're all talking about a five trillion dollar economy and an eight trillion dollar economy, sure. but a healthy, a, well, a healthy nation is of paramount importance for it to be a wealthy nation. So you know, and when you talk about health, um, you know, clean water and good food are the backbone of a healthy nation. So I think the impetus for improvement has to come not just from doctors, not just from the medical community, but from society in general, like. Uh, was mentioned by one of the other speakers as well. Mm. Uh, education becomes of paramount importance. Mm. It has to start at the school level, where you know the cafeteria and the school, the the type of food that they are serving. You know, are they giving more nutritious? Uh, yeah. You know, are, are they giving more chips and more sodas and more mm. you know fruit canned juices, or are they giving other kind of more healthy? options. Oh, yeah. Absolutely important. On that note, thank you so much doctors for joining us today in this very critical conversation. So by raising awareness and promoting healthier and mindful eating habits, we can build a healthier nation for India to achieve sustainable growth and development. Ensuring access to nutritious food across all socio-economic strata is vital as it leads to a healthier, more resilient workforce and reduces the healthcare burden. Do stay tuned for more on India Health Mission as we bring to you these critical conversations through the series. Thank you so much for watching.